understand, I've heard these questions before, and I used to think and talk that way till I had the fortunate or unfortunate uh, experience to discover that there's no such thing as beliefs or values or opinions or model of the world for that matter. These are just abstract labels for what our process is in the mind. When we talk about a belief, a belief, the belief, I have this belief that, we're talking about abstractions, we're talking about nominalizations that don't actually exist. But because of the way that the brain is put together and, and how we we react to our own internal processes, when we think or imagine that there is a something, whether that something can or cannot exist is irrelevant, and then we have a feeling about a reaction to that thought that we've got, we can create then a narrative from that event reaction, and therefore that prevents us from having whatever it is that we want in our life or that makes it more difficult to do the things that we want to do because we're imagining that there's a something, which actually isn't, that has to be addressed before we do something other than what it is that we want to do. And it's all a nonsense. You see, a belief is not something that you have. A belief is something you do. You believe. You, you value. You make important. And it's in the making important and in how you justify and instantiate the belief that you hold that makes it seem like it's a something. You know, you get two, three, four examples of something, and the more examples that you believe you identify seems to make things more concrete, more certain. Yeah, after a certain amount of time or a certain number of examples, you've collected enough that you don't have to question anymore and you just treat whatever that thought is as if it's some kind of a reality, whereas in fact it's just another assumption that you are actively in that moment creating as truth and reality rather than as BS. You don't know what your limitations are. You don't know what is actually possible. You are filled, like, <laughs> filled, full of gaseous nothing from your family, from school, from peers, from the media, from social, uh, all of this stuff that you think is yours that actually belongs to somebody else and that is the limitation and defining whatever of you, it's baloney. You don't know that these things are so, but you treat them as if. What if the things that you want to do different and the things that you want to achieve that you haven't yet achieved, what if they were merely a matter of you doing things different than you've done them before and choosing to do different things than you've done before and choosing thoughts that make you feel ready and okay to go ahead and do those things rather than thoughts that keep you thinking, that you're thinking about something that actually isn't so, but because you've come up with enough examples, it seems like there is, and that means you've got more to think about now, don't you? So instead of that, <laughs> you start concentrating on what makes you happy, what gets you active and out of your chair, and going towards the things that you want. You start having a better life, you start enjoying more, and you stop worrying about things like... I have this belief, and it's blocking me. The feeling, the submodalities, and the rest of that with the belief, it's just the brain code, those change, like this. When you're willing to stop treating these fantasies as if they're real. These are examples of how the event-driven brain will take what's going through and our reaction to it, put them together, and it's like it goes onto a tray then. And we have this experience. Oh, life is so hard. You know, when I think about this and I think about that and this thing comes up, I just feel, because that's how your brain put it together. And it was just put on a tray in front of you. And therefore, that's how it is. But you're not noticing at that moment 
how much fun you were having a little bit earlier, all the cool things that you were thinking about and the stuff that you could try. You read that book yesterday where it had some really cool ideas about how to do something different that you'd never done before. And it basically came down to, instead of doing things you did before, do something different now. But you're not feeling that now. You're just feeling blocked. Straining at stool. Favorite ambiguity of the moment. Client said, they, they were sitting on a stool and they were talking about what a strain it was. And it was just, it was too precious and, and too much. Instead of looking for what isn't so, instead of trying to address these gaseous nothings that we hold to be real, instead, if you take time and write down exactly what you want to create, what conditions do you want to create? Those conditions can be physical conditions, they can be emotional conditions, they can be mental conditions. What do you want to create different from what you've created to now? Not your evaluation of it, not your opinion about it, not your judgment of it. Just what you want to create in terms of the differences. Once you have written down what it is you want to create that's different, write down the results you've created now. Use sensory-rich terms. Stay out of the judgment. Stay out of the weirdness. Stay out of the vague abstractions. Then you can ask the question, right? What do I have to do different in order to get from here to there? And start doing that. You see, the generalizations, the calculations, the conclusions, the judgments, the opinions, and all the rest of that are not reality. Never were. What is the first presupposition in NLP? And it is said in Korsipski, the map is not the territory. The map will never be the territory. In fact, there's only a little bit of relation between map and territory, and that is vague in itself. Our thoughts, our opinions, our evaluations will never be the same thing as the world. Take it one step further, you go with Baudrillard, he doesn't even believe there's a territory anymore. It's just maps. The thinking is not the same thing as the process. We never actually deal with the world itself. We're always dealing with these transformations. Clear these out. Take them down. Get rid of them. There's lots of ways to do that. But you don't have to wait in order to start moving. If you've got a generalization, a belief, or whatever you're going to call it, that you say is standing in the way, just step to one side of it and start thinking about what it is you want to create instead and where you are. Anytime an abstract noun gets in your way, just step to one side of it. Why? Because it isn't there. Someday this will make sense. And it will make a kind of, of deadly, precise, and very humorous sense. Because what I say is true. There is no belief that can stand in your way. Nothing can stand in your way. Here's the belief. Yeah? I have this belief. The client sat down in front of me, bold-faced, bare-faced, and said, I have this belief that's in my way. And I said, where is this belief? And they said, well, it's here. Yeah? They have a belief. It's like a fucking boulder inside their head. It's imaginary. Because we're dealing with metaphor, analogy, and stuff that ain't so in an abstract realm. When we're in the concrete realm, you just step to the other side. I hope that makes sense. You see, there are some people who still think that they're thinking and still think that what goes on inside their heads and how they feel about it is who they are and what's going on. And it's not so. It's not neurologically so, it's not scientifically so, it's not spiritually so. But there's something in you that feels that it's so. We can talk about that on another occasion. But just because you imagine something, just because you think that something's in your way, I have this belief, mummy took the spoon away when I was three, and since that time I can't, all of these narratives and all of these stories, and then my girlfriend did this, and then that happened, and then, oh God. All of that narrative is precisely what's not in your way. 
for most of the things that people tell me they want and are having trouble getting or creating, it's simply because they haven't taken the actions yet. And once you figure out what it is you want to create that's different, and where you are in relation to it, and what resources are needed in order to create it, and what has to be pulled together, you then have technically what's called in the jargon a plan. And then it's a matter of just taking the next step on that plan. And you're on your way, and you're no longer thinking about things like beliefs or values, things that aren't, that get in the way. You're just planning, preparing, and moving forward. Yes, but, but, but what about? Indeed, what about? You will learn a new way of addressing all of this languaging and imagining and fake worlding that goes on in your head. You've seen the matrix, yes. You are your own Neo. Wake up, Neo. Have you thought about that? Why are there no belief chains? Well, if there's no beliefs, then why is there a belief change technique? See, that's why it's so easy to do, because they don't really exist. If you enjoyed that, and by the way, it's true. What I said is true. Even if it sounds like it doesn't make sense, it does. Just, you kind of have to, there's a couple of shifts you have to make first, but someday I hope you'll join us, Neo. <laughs> Uh, if you like the video, there's more links over here and also a link below the description. There's the like button and click the subscribe button.